and good afternoon. Thank you for joining me today for our Lunch and Learn. And today we're going to be talking about the COVID-19 cleanup procedures. So I know we've talked a lot about different things with your health and this is just another aspect, but apparently there are some uh, cleaners that people are using that actually are going to be even more uh, detrimental to your health than the actual COVID-19 is. So I know that makes everybody really excited here. And so we want to just kind of talk about that just for a moment and um, give you some information. I'm also going to give you a recommendation for what you can do in your home or in your church or in your school or wherever you happen to be to disinfect and get rid of COVID without any detrimental effects to you as a human being, okay? So this is an article that uh, talks about the use of these COVID disinfectants and how they can be uh, hazardous to humans. Now, most people are very, very cognizant of uh, chemicals and most people uh, will be changing from whatever they used to use to something that is cleaner, greener, and that kind of thing. Now, I'm all for that. I can't say that all the things that we use around here are um, as effective as I would like it to be because we try and keep all the chemicals out. And so we're really trying to use clean things. But I also know that there are some things that are marketed and they're out there and they just don't do any kind of work. And so, you know, you're kind of wasting your money on that. So, kind of want to uh, give you some information on this. There are a lot of exposures to these chemicals that are very, very toxic. Now, people are, I don't know if they still are, but back earlier on when people were really freaked out about COVID, people were uh, disinfecting, wiping down with bleach and cleaners and different things several times a day. And there is a cumulative effect of that. I mean, we did that here. My favorite thing to clean with is bleach. And why is that? Well, because bleach will evaporate into oxygen and hydrogen. So it's a very, very clean cleaner. Of course, you have to worry about, um, you know, staining things and that kind of thing. So it's not always very uh, easy to use, but it's one of my favorite cleaners. I like the way it smells. I like the fact that it kills all the germs and it evaporates into a non-toxic um, situation. I know that when my children were little, I would clean the countertops. I would clean it with bleach, let it evaporate, and then my children could just eat off the counter if that's what they chose to do. And there would not be any of that nasty chemical residue because it's the chemical residue that is uh, detrimental to your health. So just gonna be real, real transparent here. As a young mom, I was a clean freak, still, still am, but um, I would mix cleaners, which you're not supposed to do, but I, I did it and I live to tell it. I don't do it now, but I remember when my kids were little and I would mop the floors and I would put bleach and ammonia together. Yes, I would do that. Don't do that. That's not supposed to happen, but I didn't know any better back then. And I would have to open all the windows and open the door because of the fumes. And that's why you're not supposed to do that because it's very toxic. So hopefully y'all are smarter than I was when I was in my 20s and y'all do not do that. But there's a lot of fear still going around as far as the cleaners. And some of these cleaners are very, very uh, toxic to humans. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that and then I'm going to give you some information. So it says, uh, the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic response may turn out to be worse for many people than getting the disease itself. Experts have predicted a coming mental health crisis in the United States as Americans struggle with financial insecurity, job losses, okay, financial insecurity, uh, social isolation, and fears about returning to public life. Privacy concerns also continue to emerge as contract, contact tracing apps morph into the new normal. Now, I don't like that term, the new normal. I'm just not, I'm not into that. I'm not believing for the new normal. I'm believing to go back to the old normal, okay? That's what I'm believing for. I'm believing that all of this is gonna just kind of move forward. It says unchecked disinfectant procedures, all right? including those recommended by public health agencies are another major concern. 
Prior to the pandemic, chemical disinfectants had been linked to health problems, but the accelerated pace at which these toxic chemicals are now being used is causing unknown consequences to human health. I like that, unknown consequences. Now, there you can Google uh, list in, the letter in, list in. You can Google that, and that will tell you all of the chemicals that the EPA have decided are uh, effective in getting rid of the coronavirus. Now, just because the EPA says that they're effective in getting rid of the coronavirus does not mean they are safe for humans. Okay, I looked over this list uh, yesterday, all right, and there are a lot of things on this list that are hard to pronounce, so uh, I'm not even going to try and go through that, but I think there's like 400 and something different uh, chemicals on there. Um, I'll tell you, I was um, part of Leadership Like Houston several years ago here in the Humble area with the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, one of the things that they do is they take you and they uh, give you tours of, of all the hospitals in the district and things like that. And I remember one day we went into the hospital and they had just disinfected and they had just cleaned. And I'm glad they did because we know that hospitals can be quite... Um, dirty in that they have antibiotic resistant bacteria, right? That's because they clean, 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 and they've got to clean with ever stronger cleaners so that you don't come out of there with an antibiotic resistant uh, bacteria. So I'm not knocking that. I'm not criticizing that. I'm glad that they do that because it's a an environment where you need to do that. Anyway, I went in to take part in this day and when I walked into this room, they had just cleaned it. And I tell you, I could not breathe. All of a sudden, I just, I had this kind of tickle in my throat and I, I'm kind of gasping for breath. I think I'm going to have like a little seizure here. And um, I'm looking around trying to find where there is a water fountain or where there is something where I can get something to drink because these chemicals are just really interacting with my respiratory system and I'm, I'm, I'm starting to cough, I'm starting to feel really crazy and I'm, I'm embarrassed because we're supposed to be listening to this lecture and here I am having this coughing fit because of these chemicals. Now, thankfully somebody had pity on me and, and came around the corner with a glass of something that I was able to drink and um, was able to get my respiratory kind of settled down. And that's what this article is all about, is about the respiratory um, effects of these cleaners and how it's very, very damaging to you. And so I have experienced that firsthand. Now, I don't know what the people do that work in that atmosphere every day because they, you know, they go through that every day, maybe even multiple times a day. And those cleaners are very, very caustic to the respiratory system. And so with COVID-19, COVID is a virus that is inside a lipid envelope. Now, a lipid is a fat. And so a cleaner that is going to be effective against the coronavirus is going to have to break through that lipid fat in order to uh, eliminate that envelope so the virus is exposed and the virus can be killed, okay? So that's just kind of how it works. So it says that there are 400 disinfectants that meet the EPA criteria against COVID-19, right? This doesn't mean that they've been approved because they are considered safe with regard to human health, all right? Many studies on many of the chemicals are limited. Some have even been linked to asthma and other respiratory conditions, okay? Neurological and dermat dermatological, say that fast, dermatological problems. So, when you're in this atmosphere or if you are bombarding your workplace or your church or your school or your home with all of these chemicals, then you can start to develop these different kinds of uh, issues and we don't want that to happen. Exposure to disinfectants and cleaning products has long been listed and linked with health risks. In 2019, a study of 73,262 female nurses okay, um, who uh, were exposed to cleaning chemicals at work were associated with a 25% to 38% increased risk of COPD. So these are not the cleaning people. 
these are the people that are working in that atmosphere, okay? So because of the exposure to these chemicals, their risk of COPD is 25 to 38% higher than the general population, okay? Research published in the American Council, uh, sorry, American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine also found that women responsible for cleaning at home or who worked as house cleaners had accelerated declines in lung function and impaired long-term respiratory health 10 to 20 years after cleaning activity. So this is, it's really important to look at what we are using to clean. Exposure related to cleaning activities may constitute a risk to long-term respiratory health, the study concluded, with researchers stating that the damage to respiratory function in women cleaners was similar to smoking a pack of cigarettes per day, every day, for 10 to 20 years. So, none of us would believe that smoking would be conducive to our health, right? None of us would believe that but probably none of us would understand that the caustic cleaning pro, uh, programs or products, I should have said, can have the same effect of smoking a pack of cigarettes a day for 10 to 20 years. That is a lot of toxicity in the respiratory uh, situation here, okay? Health risks likely increase with increased level of disinfectant exposure making coronavirus disinfectants particularly risky due to the high frequency of application. The EPA and their guidelines for cleaning and disinfecting public spaces and homes against COVID-19 recommends services frequently touched by multiple people such as door handles, desks, faucets, and light switches to be, in, to be disinfected at least daily with certain surfaces, such as shopping carts, sales, keypads, being disinfected more often, including before each use. And so I know when I go to the grocery store, I don't like to touch the, the basket after somebody else has touched the basket, especially in this climate. So, you know, you have your little handy wipes and you're wiping it down and that kind of thing. So when they are using these cleaners, multiple, multiple times, and you're breathing in those chemicals, then you're going to be hurting your respiratory tract, so you just need to be uh, aware of that, okay? With the COVID-19, right, it says that the system, the cleaning systems uh, have accelerated, especially in hospitals. It says our, our frequencies have ramped up in public places, like lobbies and elevators, to six to eight times per day, with the restrooms cleaned every two hours. This is a hazardous proposition, immunologist and allergist Dr. Miller told the news outlet. Cleaners tend to go with highly toxic chemicals. We're creating another problem for a whole group of people and I'm not sure we're actually controlling infection. So this is something that people are looking at and they're trying to decide you know, is too much of a good thing a bad thing, okay? We do want you to disinfect your home. We do want you to disinfect your workplace. We do, we do want all of that to happen because we don't want you getting sick, okay? Added to the problem is the way some of the disinfectants are being applied, okay? And this article has a photograph of a person in a hazmat suit with uh, a, a long wand, like um, if you had one of those little containers that you would put uh, flea powder or something like that, and then you would spray your, maybe not flea powder, but insecticide that you would spray on your roses or whatever like that. Well, they've, they've got a picture of him in a hazmat suit spraying all of that in a hugely populated area, which of course, if you have to have a hazmat suit in order to spray those chemicals, those chemicals are not safe for the human beings or the fur babies that live in that space. I'm just gonna throw that out there, okay? I do not want when you come in, uh, or you have somebody come in to your area to clean up that they have to wear a hazmat suit, okay? Because that's just that's detrimental to everybody's health, the, the cleaner and yours as well, okay? It says, using sprayers that aerosol the disinfectants is becoming increasingly 
popular during the pandemic as it allows cleaners to cover far more space in a shorter period of time. Electrostatic sprayers also add a positive charge to the chemicals and the chemicals stick to the surfaces. Well, and this is right, okay? This is a, this is a correct thing to say. So the electrostatic sprayer is not necessarily the problem. It is the chemical that you put in the sprayer that's the problem. I'll just tell you, we had our building totally disinfected this week. And why did we do that? Well, we do things from time to time and it was just that time to do that. Now we had somebody come in, they did not wear a hazmat suit, okay? So kind of get an amen from that. They did have a sprayer and they were able to um, spray the whole building and I mean it was really a very very fast thing they walked through with their sprayer it covered everything but it was absolutely non-toxic a hundred percent non-toxic to human beings in fact I'm gonna read to you uh, what this says here um, this particular solution it's called a H0 CL solution it's been used for over a hundred years. In the early 1900s, during, world, during the World Wars, these solutions were used to disinfect the medical uh, equipment and dress and for and for dressing wounds. Okay, it's 100% non-toxic to humans, but it is extremely toxic to the COVID-19 virus. And so, this is what I like. I want it to be non-toxic to me and all the people that work with me, but I want it to be very toxic if any germs snuck in. Now, we try to make sure that they don't sneak in, but you know, sometimes they do. And so we make sure that we take care of it and we take care of it in a healthy way. Now this particular chemical, it's the uh, H0CL, it's a, it is on the list of the N, the list N, which is what the EPA refers to as all of the good cleaning, uh, effective cleaning for COVID-19. But it is, I think, the only one that is 100% non-toxic to human beings. And so that's, that's the main thing I want to tell you about that. We want to do that. Uh, using the sprayers with the aerosol disinfectants are becoming increasingly popular. We talked about that. Not only have the risk of aerosol disinfectants not been explored, but most of the dis disinfectants on list N have not been approved for aerosoling, misting, or fogging. Now this one that I'll talk to you about has been. It's, it's been in use for over 100 years, so it's very, very safe. You know, when you go on the planes, you've seen this. You've seen the commercials, you've seen uh, YouTubes or whatever where they, they go throughout the plane with this aerosol thing. I don't know what they're using. I don't know uh, if it's one of the, uh, the same thing that I use or if it's something different, but you want to make sure if you are in charge or if you have any influence on your church or your school or anything like that, you want to make sure that you use a company that uses a non-toxic chemical so that it kills the virus and does not have any effect on you and it doesn't have any effect on the cleaners either I mean we need to be really conscious and we need to be uh, understanding that we want them to be safe as well and we don't want them uh, fogging the whole place right and then they're breathing in that chemical this particular one is absolutely 100% safe for human beings non-toxic I even read the information on this particular chemical and they said you could actually drink it and have absolutely no problem now I'm not going to do that because I'm just not into drinking uh, cleaning agents but it's good to know that if I happen to get into it uh, that I'm very very safe and it's safe for everybody that is around me okay the New Jersey Department of Health issued a health alert bulletin that fogging ambulances with toxic disinfectants may cause illness after four emergency medical technicians were diagnosed with work-related asthma. It says fogging is not recommended in ambulances. Well, okay, I didn't think so, okay. Often the active ingredients are respiratory irritants and sensitizers and include chemicals such as chlorine, phenol, quaternary, of aluminum compounds, shortened as QUATS, Q-U-A-T-S, okay? Alcohols or hydrogen peroxide compounds listed in decreasing order of toxicity. 
The World Health Organization similarly warned in indoor spaces, routine application of disinfectants to surfaces via spraying is not recommended for COVID-19. If disinfectants are to be applied, they should be applied via a cloth or a wipe which is soaked in the disinfectant. Despite this, industrial cleaning companies are moving to spraying technologies once reserved for hospitals and school buses. Okay, he says, if we can spray it in a Hershey food plant or a hospital, we can certainly spray it on the school bus, says the president of a cleaning company of Merit Group. Okay, so the main thing I want you to understand is if you're using toxic chemicals to help you get rid of COVID-19, you could be hurting yourself with the chemicals that are being used. Now, I do want to give you a recommendation. This is who we used, okay? And I'll, I'm going to tell you this, and uh, so grab a pencil and a paper, okay? Um, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you a phone number, okay? The guy that came and took care of us uh, was very, very nice. I mean, in and out in 20 minutes. It was really, really fast, and it's 100% non-toxic to me, the human, okay? But very, very toxic to any kind of germ that would be in here. So this is a, this is a good deal. So the name of the company is Gulf Coast Sanitizing and Disinfecting, okay? Gulf Coast Sanitizing and Disinfecting. Uh, there is a phone number, 512-660-9233. Nine two three zero. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put this all in the comments. There's also a coupon code that if you tell them that Dr. Polly did this on her uh, Facebook Live, there is a coupon code, and the coupon code is TH twenty twenty. Okay, and if you'll use that, they will come out and do your. Um, do your building, and they'll do it as often as you need them to do it. The good thing is this is absolutely 100% safe. I want to just read you something about this from this company, all right? It says, our electrolyte solution is all-natural, non-toxic, non-hazardous solution that can be used for disinfecting. As a disinfectant, it is powerful oxidant called hypochlorous acid, it is 100 times more powerful than chlorine bleach, but it is safe to use around kids, pets, and food prep areas. Now, remember what I told you, bleach is my absolute favorite cleaning, right? I love bleach. Why is that? Because it, um, it disinfects and it evaporates, and you've got oxygen and hydrogen, which we breathe all the time anyway, so I'm not gonna have any kind of respiratory issue with this. Well, this particular uh, component that we use is 100% safe. It's 10, 100 times more powerful than the bleach, but it is absolutely non-toxic to humans, okay? So that's something that you want to do. It says, per the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, coronaviruses are enveloped viruses, meaning that they are one of the easiest types of viruses to kill with appropriate disinfecting products. What this means is the coronavirus has a coating on the outside called a lipid. The lipid envelope of these viruses is extremely sensitive and thus can be, restored, uh, can be destroyed, making it highly susceptible to chlorine-based solution like hypochlorous disinfectants, okay? So, it is highly effective against the flu, okay, HIV, and coronavirus. So, just going to throw that out there because I know a lot of times people are, they're, they're afraid. Um, the talking heads, and I say that with the, with the most wonderful love in my heart, they are saying a second wave is coming and people are going to get sick again and they're ramping up the fear and, and now we're going into flu season and all this kind of stuff. So I don't want you to be afraid. I want to give you tools that you can use so that you're able to uh, move forward, okay? Clean what needs to be cleaned. If you have influence in your school or in your church or in your workplace, they'll come in and like I say, it's not a whole day affair. They came in, 
They walked through, they sprayed everything, and I asked them, what is this gonna do to my furniture? Nothing. What is this gonna do to my electronics? Nothing. What is this gonna do to uh, any patient that would come in? Nothing. It's 100% zero toxicity, okay? 100% safe, zero toxicity. And so that's what we do for us, and I want to give you that recommendation for you. Just in case anybody thinks that I'm making money off this, I'm not making any money. There's no affiliate relationship here. I just wanna make sure that if you're going to do something and get ready for the fall, then I want you to do something that's very, very safe. And it's something that is non-toxic for both you and the cleaning people, okay? So let me know if you have any questions. I'll put all of this information in the comments. So it's just right there. You can reach out and. Uh, have them come and take care of your building, take care of your home, and um, be very, very careful. Okay, when I looked at this list in, L-I-S-T, capital N, when I looked at that on the EPA website, many, many of these chemicals that are listed there are very toxic and very hazardous to your health. Yes, they will kill the coronavirus, but they will give you respiratory issues. I do not want you to have a respiratory issue. And isn't it ironic that a respiratory virus, right, is killed with something that's gonna cause a respiratory con condition? And we don't want that, okay? So I'm as honest as I can be, I'm as serious as I can be, be good to yourself, take care of yourself, take care of your building, but do it with a non-toxic product. Love you guys, it's the weekend, take care of yourself. Okay, do a lot of self-care, and I'll see you back next week.